In a gripping tale of love and obsession, a former partner goes to extraordinary measures to win back their lost love, delving into dangerous territory in the process. As their desperation intensifies, the line between devotion and obsession blurs, leading to unexpected and perilous consequences. This compelling narrative explores the length some individuals will go in the pursuit of love, unravelling a thrilling and suspenseful story of love's dark side. Chapter 30 Early one day, Rachel's office phone rang. Coleman and Associates. Rachel Coleman, please. Whom may I say is calling? Jackson Preston. Rachel was taken aback, unsure whether to answer the call. After a moment of hesitation, she decided she couldn't spend her life avoiding him and answered. In the conversation that followed, Jackson managed to persuade Rachel into taking him on as a client. He expressed understanding about the divorce and hoped they could remain on good terms. Despite her reservations, Rachel agreed to accept Jackson as a client, albeit on a trial basis. She realised that turning away clients for personal reasons wouldn't be sound business practice. After hanging up, Rachel called Daryl to share the news about Jackson becoming her newest client. Are you crazy? Daryl's voice thundered through the phone. No, I'm not. I have a business to run, and I can't afford to let personal issues dictate my decisions. Daryl fell silent for a moment before expressing his concerns. I think you're making a mistake. Jackson showing up out of nowhere and pretending everything's fine is suspicious. Please be careful. Rachel countered. Well, if he's up to something, the sooner he gets it out of his system, the better for everyone. Daryl sighed. I don't like it, but it's your business. I have to go now. I'll talk to you later. I love, Rachel tried to say, but the call ended abruptly before she could finish. This was a pretty tense week for Rachel. She talked to Daryl off and on with brief conversations on his part. She didn't know whether to argue about this or sat back and let his anger run its course. Daryl continued to work on his business while still working full-time at his job. If it weren't for Paul, he couldn't have pulled off all the hours that he had to devote to travelling back and forth. Paul covered many of Daryl's shifts and made sure that reports were turned in on time. Daryl furnished his offices with the help of an interior decorator, and when the job was complete, he was stunned at how nice everything looked. He could hardly wait until Rachel saw it, but he was still upset with her. He named the company D and R Janitorial Services. He used a temp agency to help him find qualified employees. He started small, only hiring about five employees and a reliable manager. It was not difficult for him to build a customer base. Through effective advertising and the right connections, businesses lined up to become his customers. He offered great service at a fair rate. Without her knowledge, Daryl made sure that he got the contract to clean Rachel's offices. He did it through a secret bid, and no doubt, he was the lowest bidder for the job and had the highest quality to offer. It had been a tense week for Rachel, marked by sporadic conversations with Daryl, each one brief and filled with his palpable anger. She grappled with whether to confront him about his feelings or simply let his frustration dissipate on its own. Meanwhile, Daryl juggled his burgeoning business venture with his full-time job, relying heavily on the support of his friend Paul. Paul stepped in to cover Daryl's shifts and ensure that all reports were submitted on time, enabling Daryl to dedicate the necessary hours to his new endeavour. Chapter 31 Rachel dialed Becky's number to confirm their appointment, and together with Mark, 
they spent the rest of the week diligently preparing the necessary documents to organise Becky's accounts. Becky greeted them warmly at the airport's baggage claim. Hey, sis, Becky exclaimed, enveloping Rachel in a hug. Hey, yourself. You look fabulous. What's your secret to staying so stunning? Becky introduced herself to Mark, who would be her personal accountant and financial adviser. Mark smiled warmly and reached out to shake Becky's hand. I'm delighted to finally meet you. I've heard nothing but praise about you. Likewise. Rachel mentioned you'll be taking good care of me. Absolutely. Momentarily flustered by his own choice of words. He quickly apologised, clarifying his intention. Becky laughed off the awkward moment. I know what you mean. No offence taken. After some laughter, they retrieved their luggage and headed to the car with Becky. Upon reaching the ranch, Becky showed Mark to his room before heading to Rachel's. Beck, I think Mark has a crush on you. Please, Rach, let's not go there. You brought me an accountant, not a boyfriend. Be well, dear, I can't help it if men notice your beauty. Any man with a pulse would be smitten. Let's just focus on dinner preparations. As the evening progressed, they enjoyed a business dinner, discussing the necessary services and requirements. Despite Mark's best efforts to conceal his attraction to Becky with conversation, his gaze remained fixed on her throughout the night. Later, they decided to relax with drinks at the ranch. After everyone retired for the night, Mark visited Rachel's room seeking insight into Becky's personal life. Rachel, I don't think I'm the right person for this job. Every time I see Becky, my heart races. How can I focus on my work when I can't stop thinking about her? Mark, it'll be okay. The initial excitement will likely wear off. I should have warned you about how beautiful Becky is. No... I should have realised you had a beautiful sister just by looking at you. But I never saw you in any other light than my boss. Mark, take a deep breath. Everything will work out. Trust me. With that, Mark bid her good night and returned to his room. They started early the next morning, diving into Becky's financials. By the time Rachel and Becky woke up, Mark had already organised everything on the dining room table. They spent the entire day sorting through documents. Rachel suggested they go out to unwind, and both Mark and Becky agreed it was a good idea. However, Rachel suddenly developed a headache and decided to stay in. She urged Mark and Becky to go and enjoy themselves. Before leaving, Becky cornered Rachel in her room. I know what you're trying to do, and I don't think it's a good idea. Becky, all I want is for you to get to know Mark better. If you're going to work together, you need to build a solid relationship. I'm not trying to play matchmaker. You're both adults and won't let anything interfere with your business. I genuinely do have a headache, but if you want me to come, I will. It's your choice, but Mark is your accountant and financial advisor. Let's just forget about tonight and move on. Rachel, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just trying to shift the blame for finding Mark attractive. You're right. I need to get to know him, especially since he'll be handling my money. Becky smiled and kissed Rachel's forehead. You rest. We'll see you soon. Mark and Becky went out to dinner. Becky, I want to be up front with you since we're going to be working closely together. I find you very attractive and would love to know more about you personally. But I am committed to maintaining a professional boundary and will not do anything to make you uncomfortable. Rest assured, I'll do my best to keep your books in order and keep you informed about everything happening with your account. We can schedule meetings quarterly or whenever suits you best. After Mark finished speaking, Becky kissed him and he tried to remain composed. Mark, 
I trust Rachel's judgement, and I know you're the right person for the job. I also find you attractive. I'm not sure where things will go between us, but for now, let's take it as it comes. Agreed? Agreed. They spent the rest of the evening chatting and enjoying drinks, leaving the future uncertain but open to possibilities. Tune in to the next episode to find out what happens. Don't forget to show your support by liking, commenting and subscribing.